Hello everyone and welcome back to Nexus Commentaries, our second cast today if you didn't catch our first one, um, but we are going to be doing this one as well. So uh, we have In Too Deep versus Few Loose Screws in Division A of NGS. Uh, the coin flip went over to Few Loose Screws, who then chose to have first pick this time around. The bands were Sky Temple and Ultrac by In Too Deep, and then a few loose screws banned out Braxis and BOE. And the first map that we are going to, Infernal Shrines. And Logicalia returned uh, for this game as well. So, Logicalia, what do you think about Infernal Shrines? Uh, Shrines is cool. Uh, it is. A uh, map similar to Volskaya, like we saw earlier in our previous cast, where it's very point heavy. So, point control heroes like Alex Strong, uh, Ragnaros occasionally with his molten core. Sometimes we see the off Diva. It's probably Diva's best map, so that's fun. I don't know if any of these teams play Diva with them. Uh, I don't uh, think so. There is actually. a lot of staying power. Good. Uh, f Into Deep has a couple interesting heroes that they have played so far this season, including Butcher. They've mm -hmm. ran Mediv. They've ran Morales. I thought there was one more that I thought saw that was kind of interesting, but it's not to me right now. Few loose screws, on the other hand, they do play that Ragnaros that you just talked about. They also play a Zarya, which sometimes you see on this map for the triple tank. They run a Tychus, yeah, which I think is a little underrated right now. They run a Malganus and an Abathur as well. So I think Malganus is super good, but I'm pretty uh, alone in that. <laughs> uh. Uh, I'm a little iffy on Malganus right now. We've seen him work, though. Uh, we saw him in the Heroic Division game that we've casted previously, and he did pretty well there. Excuse me. Yeah, I think he saw Um, This game, for In Too Deep, we do have uh, Key, 1108 who has co-casted on this channel a couple times recently. Um, so part of the reason we picked it up and uh, have a chance to mock him, as we like to call him a feeder... <laughs> But Infernal Shrines, point heavy control, um, also a good Gazlo map sometimes, or a good Probius map. Also or, a good one. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned D.Va is an interesting choice. D.Va is able to use Mech Explosion to secure about 10 of the um, monsters at a time. No guy who mains D.Va. He, uh, he's like, when we get to 30, we can all leave and I can just bomb it whenever we want it. So, good strat. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's just like, all right, well, we're guaranteed 10, so we're really only racing to 30 while they're racing to 40. No, it ends at 30, doesn't it? No, it ends up. It... it did end on 30 on release. That was bad. When this map first came out. But now it is 40. All right. So, at least I, I drew a blank there for a second. Yeah, which one it was. It right, looks like we have the last member jumping in for Into Deep, so the draft will be starting any second now. The first pick will be going over to a few loose screws. What would you look to first pick on a map like this? Shrines is a weird one. Uh, first pick on Shrines could be a lot of different heroes, depending on the team's priority. Johanna, pretty good. She is pretty hype in the tank meta. If they can get one of those super uh, highly contested heroes like uh, Zeratul, depending on how these teams prioritize it. Maiev as well, depending on how these teams prioritize it. Ana, pretty good, is often picked for good reason. Still very good on maps like these, especially when there are all these tight chokes where you go our team. Bunches up for pretty good uh, healing dark piercing. Of note, I've casted a lot of the members on Into Deep previously for Bush League, and I gotta say, I have I was checking their heroes profile stats, and they haven't pulled it out yet this season. But I do know Bacon plays a mean KTZ, so it'll be interesting to see if we see any of that tonight. Probably not on Infernal Shrines, but maybe in a later matchup, different map. Yeah, it turned a little weird for Kalthazad. Not, not bad, either. Not bad, though, in my person. We see a few loose screws um, ban out the Diablo here. Uh, he still was really solid tank, even after all of his nerfs. A very good CCing, especially on one target in particular. Good AoE slow with Lightning Breath or Pressure with uh, APOC. On shrines too, it's it's a Diablo map from the game Diablo, and it's also a Diablo map because Diablo is really good here. Both of the Diablo maps are good for the hero Diablo. That is true. Killfoss getting banned out for his uh, ability to clear out the shrine, as well as uh, in those choke points, he has an option to get a lot of living bomb value, phoenix value, essentially uh, 
Pyroblast. And the game we casted earlier, did they even cast Pyroblast? I do not remember seeing the Pyroblast. We've seen my F band out though in this series, and uh, another normal band that you see a lot at the higher tier of play, not so much in lower tiers usually, but up top they still heavily prioritize that my F for the pickoff options or the AoE uh, grouping options. I have not as popular as she used to be, not as broken either. She was pretty broken before, so not as broken as it's not quite a lot. Still extremely good. And there's the Ana, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Ana banned out. Pretty good healer all around. Anti heal also super strong. So we, we're looking for this first pick now going into Infernal Shrines. Could be a Gul'dan maybe? Could be a Johanna. It's going to be the Anubarak. Uh, pretty standard pick up there. Cocoon being super good. Two stun options. Good tank ability potentially with the W build. A lot of different uh, abilities to dive towers as well, which is really a reason he kind of took off for a while there. Yeah, as well as supplement the uh, Punisher push in this map. Specific. The yeah. Beatles and everything. When they go to jump the... Uh, the John Cena, he can go across the wall and send them out as well. We have Johanna Valla picked up for in too deep, potentially looking at uh, double support it, maybe? Or to hyper carry this Valla? Yeah, that's definitely a threat when you pick Valla Vizzer. Especially with the Johanna as a beefy frontline that they just, it's gonna be hard to get past, but double support might be a little weak to the Cocoon. If they Cocoon the Valla, they have to go about three seconds, even if they're hitting it without her. It could be an instrumental amount of time for them to have to deal with it. As Carrion's picked up for a few loose screws here, as well as the Gul'dan, that is a ton of shrine clear. That, that is a scary couple of picks. That is a scary tooth. They but, still have some options here. Neither team that picked is, up a healer. Is of no, no yeah, pay. definitely could ban out a healer. I think I would ban out a Lucio if I'm in duty. Yeah, and then pick up uh, something. Maybe a Stukov pick up here, or... Uh... Though picking up a Lucio to break cocoons wouldn't be too bad. Could also pick up a Tassar yeah. to do it. Yeah, Tassadar is an option. Tassadar Bala is still about They're as good as banning Lucio. out the Mothiel. Are we gonna see mm. Cho Gull and then Ariel picked up last? That would that would be bold, especially considering the new Varak is already on the it But would, I would love to see. I would as well. Also Morales super good healer for both Vala and Cho Gull. Just throwing that out there as Vala well. Vala definitely Possible Vala very scary into a Nibirak Kerrigan. Or, um, Morella, that is. Vala is, Vala is well for that matter. But yeah, Morella Right wing getting banned out by a few, a few loose screws. A little interesting mm -hmm. ban of support when they have the first pick of supports and they have another one. Maybe they have a little awkward pick. Maybe they'll pick up a Morales because uh, Morales cool Dawn healing synergy was something that was played a lot when he was first put out there. No Cho Gaul gonna come out. They are gonna pick up Leo Ariel here. Ariel's super good. I think she's underrated heavily. Once Ana's out of the pool, I think she arguably becomes number one in terms of just raw healing numbers. And there's definitely the potential for that. And also with Ariel, there's the potential for a second healer. Probably won't be the Uther since we have the Leor. Oh, key, Key's tanking. I didn't, that is interesting. Yeah, I, I was going to ask that before. I know Key's tanked a couple times for their team, but generally Key is a hard support player. As Anduin and Chen are picked up for a few loose screws, Chen is very dangerous. Very dangerous yeah. for our uh, Vala especially. The team, a uh, few loose screws right now, looking extremely dangerous with their picks. Lots of damage, lots of shrine clear. They can take a shrine in like 10 seconds if you're not careful. You can't be late to these objectives if you're in too deep right now. As they're going to pick up their last pick in two seconds, Here's one second. And they picked a Medivh coming out from them. So it is a hyper carry Vala. But they you have a double support. It is. I think with the Medivh they can survive the Chen ult if Medivh isn't in a cocoon at the same time or feared away. Yeah, this is... Blue Screws has a scary team. I, I would not want to be uh, in 2D. In 2D might be feeling like they're in a little too deep. Both teams are, I think both teams are kind of scary because if they don't kill them in like one rotation of abilities, in too deep will just take yeah. off. I'm getting word from chat that uh, Key smells like onions. That confirmed from our, our sources on the ground. All right, so on in too deep, we have Lost Key, Lock Slay. 
on the Vola. Bacon playing the Ariel, my favorite name in the Nexus. Naze playing the Leo. Key playing on that Johanna and Grizzly64 playing Mediv. And for loose screws, I think we have Wipeout on Anubarak, at, at A Cash on Gul'dan, Lompico on Infinite Loop on Anduin, and Ragnarok on Chen. Yes. A lot of actually higher player levels in this round. Everyone over a thousand except for Infinite Loop. Get up there, Loop. You can play more. Sorry. As we yeah. head into game one on Infernal Shrines of Into Deep versus Few Loose Screws, we have talents coming out already. We, of course, have Portal Mastery, Mastery coming out from the Mediv. We have Echoed Corruption coming out from Gul'dan. His damage output will depend on how quickly he can finish that up. We have Hold Your Ground coming in from the Johanna. Bold strategy from the Enduin. Stra uh, which is still generally the pick, though I know some people have fallen away based on some of the nerfs that it's had over there since his release. We actually have the damage quest coming out from Ariel, which is interesting because it's the only talent in the game that arguably makes the ability worse than it already was. Yeah, because that weird animation. Yeah, the, it actually increases the animation cast time for her Q, and because of that, I argue that the talent's never worth picking up. Uh, we I actually have... Go ahead. Oh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I, think, I think the most interesting talent here is Assimilation Mastery. We don't have Fury this one for Kerrigan, which is strange on the run. They have the gold then though, as both teams are going in super heavily, but the Ariel, the Ariel getting the Mediv protection is going to be able to heal up the Vala and everyone else as the uh, Leo is actually going to use his Unstoppable to try to get some ground here on the Chen. He's draining the Chen pretty heavily, but Kerrigan's around the corner from him. We do have a Storm Strout recipe, Secret Recipe coming out from the Chen, so he's going to heal for percent health every time he casts an ability. Unfortunately, it's not. Usually it's, uh, I have the Tiger as uh, Nubrek dives on the Vala, but Kerrigan dives on this Ardell who's at half health and doesn't have that much energy, so she's going to have to play very carefully here as she starts healing up the Johanna and herself here. Not a whole lot of energy just yet from the, uh, this Vala. Yeah, I was talking of uh, Loose Screws team comp a lot. In 2 Deep's team comp, very sustaining. If uh, Screws don't get their big burst combo off right away, definitely there's the potential to turn very heavily. Of note, this Leo has actually double soaked the top mid already once, so this could be a, a strat coming out from them where he will double soak top mid and the rest of them will sit bottom, applying a ton of pressure here. That is a oh, lot smart. of uh, Deep throwing out the portal, though, but no one's going to be there to take it. It was just a threatening portal to force the new brick to zone it out. It's hard to take Chen in a heads up fight as Leo, although he doesn't have Eye of the Tiger, so he might be able to do it. I don't know if Storm's that secret recipe lets him tank through that damage or not. I think secret recipe would be actually pickable if it procs on every single take of the flame breath when you yeah, let someone tough. otherwise it's just one take and it's really bad but we have the kerrigan going in and something out the vala again as the uh, anubrak looks to stun out but instead hits the vala and then the johanna we have the portals coming in as Medivh's gonna portal forward throw out an auto and then portal back because kerrigan was hiding in the bush right next to him and uh, looking to pick him off there as we have level fours being picked up for both teams now they do scout out that they're taking this camp for a few loose screws and uh, the stun on the anubrak there but not no follow-up really is, uh, well, a few loose screws start it, it will be in too deep looking to pick it up as, uh, no, never mind, a few loose screws are going to come back in after, uh, tapping. The camp is not yet, or it did go to the way of, uh, in too deep there, but both teams mm -hmm. just going to portal out here and, uh, move on with their lives. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty uneventful. I disconnected, but I'm good. Gul'dan wasn't there for the fight, and they might have been able to get something if he was, but he was too busy soaking mid as they does give them a slight advantage in XP for the time being. But he only has 8 stacks on his Echoed Corruption so far. Multi-shot build coming out from Vala, very good with the Ariel to just give one ability and then full uh, full energy bar coming out from them. Debatably, that's the best Shrine Clear as well. Very true. Uh, Holy Reach coming out from the Anduin, so if he lands a root, he'll have a chance to just crit a couple autos on them from extra range, potentially giving them a more CC and burst options with this Kerrigan as the Nurek looks to zone out two of them, but Johanna's stuck in the middle, but is going to be able to pop her shield. W coming out from the Vala, but of note, someone was low in mana here. Maybe I was not paying attention enough. As we have Medivh keeping vision on a few loose screws here, as teams are just kind of poking a little bit back and forth, looking for something here. Medivh portal going in, and Leo, and the whole into deep is just going to go super deep here. They're going to try and focus down the Gul'dan, who's going to be pulled into the bush by the Anduin, who's then going to get stunned out and whipped. Meanwhile, Kerrigan's in the back, picked off the Vala. 
That's all the damage from Into Deep gone already without that Vola. This Ardo is going to fall as well. She doesn't have energy. Johanna's going to be forced to take the Medivh portal, and this leaves Leo in the back line as he was nor ignored during that fight. It's also the power of Medivh there with that very deep portal that almost destroyed Gul'dan, but the Leap of Faith really saved him there. Very true. We actually have uh, Deadly Strike coming from the Chen. Usually Kick Build doesn't come in until post 10. We also have uh, Raven Familiar coming from the Medivh, so portaling onto the back line, trying to burst someone down with that is a very good option. W build from the Anubrek as he dives after the uh, Infernal Shrine objective, the Punisher. Uh, jump there, coming out from him. Elusive Brawler picked up by the uh, Chen there as well. As uh, Kerrigan's getting uh, good damage on this Johanna, but it's really the Ariel who's in trouble here. She's going to get Kerrigan combo and she's going to be forced to whip the Kerrigan as she's at 140 health. Was able to take the Medivh portal out of there and heal herself up a little bit. A couple more Echoed Corruption stacks for that Gul'dan as they got half this fort down as well as the entire wall. Key looking to chase a little bit here on this Johanna, but doesn't quite have a that big of a health bar coming from him. Chen was all able to off soak this entire time. Yeah, uh, NTD didn't get, or, uh, Scarcely just didn't get a huge advantage there, but it's definitely going in their favor, so... Medivh and Johanna super low here oh, as, uh, no. Grizzly's been able to barely get out before the Kerrigan sun stops his inner, uh, channel. Bacon missed the heal on Loxie, and it might cost him his life as Kerrigan was able to finish him off. And meanwhile, Key's getting super low as well. Gonna get pulled back in, 200 health on him as he gets a new Rex stun and rooted, and he will die to the Kerrigan Q as well. Bacon having a, almost a full bar here is gonna be able to get out as long as with the Medivh protection and the portal. As, uh... Yeah. A few loose screws here looks for uh, the minion wave to come in to finish this fort off. They really want this fort, and that's really important for them to get this and start getting that cata pressure in the top lane. The lane that you generally don't go to that often unless there's an objective up there in that late game. Yeah, that's a pretty good advantage that they got so far. They definitely need to keep it up or in too deep to totally turn this around. They're pretty wild team comp. One stack definitely left. We've seen some crazy Medivh plays already. Well, not crazy, but some very valuable Medivh plays. Some great portal and great shield that really turned a lot of those engages from, like, a total disaster to a mitigatable. Arcane Explosion picked up for Medivh, so this could help them yeah, be true. that little extra damage they need to finish people off as 10s are going to be picked up by a few loose screws here, and they do take Fear, they do take Cocoon, no random destruction this game. Ultralisk picked up along with Light Bomb Ooh. and Storm Earth and Fire. Also have no Energized Cord for the Ariel. I know it's somewhat popular. That is Stun Quest finish for Ariel. That is her level 4. That is going to give her an extra 250 damage on her whip. Potentially going to be able to combo someone down from their team as well. As yeah, a few loose that. screws. Yeah. Yeah, a few, uh, few loose screws will be able to finish off that camp there. As uh, Into Deep is looking to finish up getting 10s here right now. They need to be careful as this wall is going down pretty fast. And once it drops, Kerrigan and Anubrek may be looking to dive across and pick someone off. As Leo is showing in the top lane, or was showing in the top lane just recently. Though they're playing a little conservative, they uh, just trying to get some echoed corruption stacks potentially going on as both teams are kind of rotating. This mid camp is still going. Got a tower and is looking to kill the wall now as a uh, few loose screws still able to zone that out. Lariel about to move up here as the Leo is having to get protect and use his Wraith walk to get out of there. Key is also coming in a little aggressively there. We uh, ten's about to be picked up by Into Deep as they actually oh, start the engagement a little before they get ten here, which could be risky as they start getting low already. Uh, Newberg dives in, and lands a stun on two, and then the Atune comes in as they pick up ten. Light bomb coming out on the Chen, who's actually going to take light bomb off with Storm of Fire. Polybomb coming out from the Medivh. Only back for Johanna getting feared. She's super low, 190 health on her as Ultralis tries to chase her down. Vola sitting at about a quarter health as well. Ooh, that was a lot of coming out. I think of. Uh, Chen held Storm of Fire just a split second longer to let that sun go off. They would have been able to hear some of those kills. But he yeah, tried his hardest. Awkward into deep engaging right as they got 10. Yeah, somehow nobody died there either. There was a, there was a really good Aegis on the point and then also a Medivh shield. Actually, that's Cocoon out on the Medivh as a Nubarak tries to follow up on it, but he doesn't get anything there. Meanwhile, Chen's on this Vala again, applying tons of pressure. Ariel getting hit by a couple things as well there. Both teams no just able, really to able to kill anything so far. This is this this is definitely worse for Screw. They need to still be able to kill stuff, or this game could totally turn around. Two loose screws does have four kills to the nun on the the other one. I see you DC'd here. I, I'm back. I don't know. What to do. All I right. Yeah, you are back. We do have uh, 
into deep try and pick up a little bit extra XP here as they portal in the Leo who lands a tomb on two and Ariel Whip gonna hit the Chenna light bomb going off and hitting three here as Medivh shield coming out on Leo uh, Aegis on the Ariel polybomb going back and forth between the Chen who ended up falling and the Anubrak the super low health bars on both teams as Leo now falls as well to the Kerrigan or to Chen Chen killed himself cool Don killing the other two uh, really we right. have the Anubra getting out with 140 health as Ariel's sitting super low as well. There's Medea's Q quest being finished in this fight. Johanna's super low. She's going to fall down. She's not careful. 60 health, 20 health, 30 health, and she will fall as well as the objective is picked up for a few loose screws. What a hype game so far. As Medea's going to get stunned out by this Anubra as well. If he's not careful, he's going to fall down. Grizzly's going to have to use protect on himself because stunned by the Punisher. He's falling down too. That is uh, another four kills going the way of few loose screws as they're looking to push in with this Punisher. Solid games coming out from them so far as they pick up 13 talents. And the bright side is Medivh did finish Master's Touch, so he's free to beat as much as he wants to now. We have the Gul'dan pushing in. He's gonna, uh, the Punisher is going to jump on the Vala and Nubrax is going to try to follow up, but she's able to flip away as he's now behind the wall. His team will finish off the wall so you can get through. Frozen Punisher, which means it is turning off building, so turn off the tower there, letting them finish that. And now he's going to look to root the Vala in the back line. Medivh portaling in the Leo trying to. But in Tomb going out on three as uh, Kerrigan jumps That's into it. Light Bomb on two, though. Fear as well. Bacon getting stunned by the Punisher again. Cocoon on the Vala and they're lacking damage without it. Meanwhile, Razi on this Leo is in the back getting tons of value from them. Medivh and healing. Echo Corruption is going to be finished up, and it's going to echo back on this Ario a little bit, as Key and Grizzly and Bacon all taking a little bit of damage from it. Razzle's still alive on this Leo in the back lane. He's going to finally fall. Meanwhile, Tiny Portal coming out, but the Kerrigan getting pulled out by the uh, Anduin, and then uh, Ario going to fall to the Anubrak. 300 health left on the Gul'dan. He's super low. Both teams got super low there, but without the... Um, I Without... The sustaining coming out from into deep, they're gonna all fall there. They need a little yeah. more uh, damage with that cocooned Vala coming That's out. That's the problem with Vala into Anubarak. Just the damage, always, it's always wrapped, and then you're in trouble. <laughs> uh, never carry Vala. Uh, Medivh ended up did seeing a little bit in that game. It was just probably a little too intense for him. What a hype match so far, though. Holy cow, lots of things going back and forth. Everyone pressing R at the same time, which is always super fun to watch. See who comes out on top. Lots of saving alts potentially coming out from Into Deep. A lot of offensive alts coming out from a uh, few loose screws. One team's looking to just dive in and kill something, and the other team's looking to sustain and eventually win the fight. Right now, it's been going the way of few loose screws. Yeah, they're just barely clutching it out. There's a lot of really good Medivh and uh, Ariel saves in these fights, keeping everybody alive, but that cocoon on Vala just really turns the tide every time. Does they... It's always pretty close. There was a panic Aegis in that last fight, which I think was sort of a problem. The only thing Ariel hit was the Ultralisk. That wasn't really going to kill her. But that that's sort of that, that high stress thing that can happen. Just yeah. at the drop of a hat, you don't really sort of panic and hit your Arba. Very much so. It looks like both teams are ready up, so they're going to be going back into this in a second here. And when they do, we'll flip it back to the game. Tell them we're ready. I don't think they can see it. Though. So, but they should be starting <laughs> up the game. They always just leave us as a server. They don't make us host, which means we can't actually talk to them. Yeah. So, uh, you lend the game again, I see. I'm not really... It keeps, like, very briefly DC. Alright. Yeah. Well, I can't tell them to ignore that, so, uh... It's fine. He actually can see it. It's not a rip caster. But, we're waiting, uh... Yeah, alright, so they're gonna they're doing a countdown here, and we're gonna go back into it here. They said pausing in three, and then they didn't do anything. Oh, there's the three. All right, so here we go. They're counting down. We're going to unpause this game here. And the game is back in action. And we have the Chen taking the bottom camp. Meanwhile, we have Infinite Loop on Lumpico, Lumpico on uh, the mid camp here. That's going to be two camps quickly picked up for a few loose screws at the same time here. As Medivh is going to scout out this Chen, we'll see if they choose to do anything with it as a... They don't have either one of their frontliners here just yet, so most likely this camp, yeah, the camp will be going over to a few loose screws. We have Piercing Lash picked up by the Arrow, looking to stun everyone inside those Entombed. That could be a interesting change that they might have needed. Meanwhile, uh, the Ominous Wrath coming out from Leo as well, so the anti-damage there. As well as the uh, cooldown on the Medivh, so a lot of powerful 13s picked up for a uh, few loose screws here, or in too deep. As Vala also got Gloom Spell Armor to help her survive some of this burst coming out from a few of these screws. 
As we see him in Deep Portal come out, and we have in two on one, he's gonna get stunned out by both the Johanna ult and the Ariel Whip as that fear come out, and that anti synergy with the Light Bomb on the Anubarak who got low, and he's gonna fall. Meanwhile, so does Ariel. He in the middle of the enemy team here as the Chen is diving this Vala and Medivh in the background. That Stormer Fire coming out, it's gonna go on the Leo and root him out. And Polybarm on the to the Stormer Fire, and that's gonna get tons of value as well as Gul'dan kills off the Medivh. That's a huge Polybomb though, going back and forth, spreading among four people. For a few loose screws there. Vala taps and is going to try to poke in a little bit more damage, but she's going to instantly fall to the Kerrigan and Chen as Key's sitting there at barely any health and probably needs to go back as that mid fort or mid keep is gone and Key's getting dove by the Chen now. He's getting super low, he's going to take some burn damage, but it is a Johanna at the end of the day and that's going to be a lot of health as never mind it hits zero and he falls as well. <coughs> yeah, this is not looking great. If I think I'm fine now. <laughs> we do have the 16 advantage going over as Entomb goes on the Kerrigan, and Kerrigan will get stunned out, but Light Bomb as the counter response and hits the Vault or Ariel. And there's the Poly Bomb in the response to that as well as both teams are training all this back and forth. 405 health on the Kerrigan, she's gonna fall. Chen is gonna die to the Ariel, but it does not matter as game one goes over to a few loose screws. Yeah, loose screws played that really well. They did everything that they needed to to make that comp work. There was, uh, in 2D definitely could have turned that with the right engage, but they just never got a chance to get it. Very much of how so. Tight, uh, loose screws. Oh man, that was quite the match. Very, very hype, I'd say. Uh, we have four kills of 15. We'll don topping Siege and Hero damage. Topping Hero damage by about 14k. A lot of it's probably the Echoed Corruption. But topping Siege by quite a bit, about 40,000 Siege damage coming here from that Gul'dan over Did anyone else. Yeah, the Kerrigan makes all the flashy plays and gets all the crazy kills, but Gul'dan was the one putting in the work in the back of the line, making all those, doing that sustained deeps that really turns, that really wins the fight in the long run. Yes, very much so. We do see the Leo uh, topping Siege, damage tanked and XP, so Leo's putting in a lot of work tonight across the board. Yeah, he's a good hero. So if you were in too deep and you know boe is banned out which is a map where double support vala would probably be one of the best comps you could pull out and knowing that braxis is also gone which is another map you might pull it out on where would you look to go if you're taking map pick here that's a good question i'm not sure definitely could do both scott potentially a um an ultra act pass maybe i think double support may be a little viable there um Ultrak was banned out as well. Sky, Sky, Brex is Ultrak and Boe being the four maps banned out. That's reasonable. I mean, the double support. I think it's not that it looked bad, but our new barrack counters it quite well. They, they played it well, but Blue Screws I think played their comp a little bit better. I feel like a new barrack and Honor are the two heroes that you either need one of them or you need both of them banned away. Yeah, I would agree with that. Ana with the anti heals is going to shut down any double support you take off with and try to use. Wait. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily impact the Medivh too much, but it is. Yeah, against the Aria looks pretty good. I well, mean, just against all in general. Medivh has the heal on his shield where you heal up for, I think it's 50% of the damage that you take. And then there's a talent for making it like 75. Yeah. So, still waiting to hear back from them. Um, so. Trying to think what else there is out there that they could be looking for here. I mean, if they go for first pick, what would they uh, potentially first pick here? Actually, we know what map they're going to. They're going to Tomb of the Spider Queen. Ooh. So, going into the Tomb of the Spider Queen, very small map. Very rotation heavy, especially in the early game. We saw the Leo do a lot of early rotations for into, into deep already. Potentially looking to go into that as well again. Uh, what would else would you might look for on here? Jaina Gul'dan maybe. Yeah, Jaina, very strong hero. Gul'dan, Gul'dan is wave, wave player is just really the name of the game. Uh, Johanna probably again we'll see in some capacity. Their Victor. Johanna, yeah, Johanna, very tanky, very good wave clear coming up from a tank. Uh, potentially a Rhaegar, maybe, as uh, he's able to wave clear as a support very well. Rhaegar also good to break off and do the Bruiser Cam at certain opportunities, because it is very often hard to find time to actually do that camp properly. 
and Rhaegar is pretty good at doing it by himself or helping somebody else do it very Yeah. I mean, we could see... I mean, Feud Loose Screws, honestly, I feel like just pulls the same draft. If I was them, you just pull the exact same draft. It worked really well. It has tons of wave clears built into it. Pull the same draft and you just run it again. See if they can respond to it. If they can't, then you win. <laughs> it's that easy, you know? Uh, yeah, if I were Loose Screws, I would also ban out the Medivh. I think the Medivh did a lot of work last game, and it is a pretty solid counter to the draft that they were running, if it weren't for the... Polybone did a lot of work, especially when he uh, got it on the Storm of Fire in the one, where he was able to shut down like the, the two melee pandas. And uh, that puts a lot of damper on that damage, as well as the uh, mobility and options that he would have on that uh, uh, panda, panda power. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe swap the Medivh out for maybe an Uther. You have the Divine Shield option, where you could stand up there. Uh, Holy Shock is really good for poking. It gives you a good finisher, honestly. I've seen, uh, when I've been playing Uther, I've seen Uther's been played recently with Holy Shock. I've seen, like, quad kills come out of Uther because he's just sniping the last hit on everyone with Holy Shock. I think that's really underrated because he, he's super tanky once he has that. Sure. Uh, one team had mic issues for their team, so they're trying to work that out real quick, which is what this extra delay is for. Is we are in the lobby right now waiting for it to start uh this is this the map where we see the uh ktz potentially come out from bacon do you think it will stay on support i mean i'd love to see the Kelthas. i hate Kelthas as a hero because he's annoying to play with but he is fun a lot i feel like he'd be an easy hero to cast though because it's like chain goes out chains miss all right well we're, we can ignore that hero now for like the next 15 seconds yeah. Or the chain hits and the, chain the hero's hits, dead. The hero's dead. All right, now we ignore that hero for the next 15 seconds. Uh, very cooldown dependent, but very good at picking off one or two heroes every fight if you're just looking for that numbered advantage. All right, well, they're going to go ahead and ready up here, and they just said they'll finish working out this mic issue in the lobby of the game. So as soon as In Too Deep notices that is their lobby host will be starting any second now. Alright, and they acknowledge it. Sorry, three, two, one, and then you have that long delay. And they forgot to set it to a draft lobby. Uh, apparently, it's just going to be a pre select draft. So that could be interesting, as you can see a lot of things happen in that case. Uh,. In that case, what would you run? Do, we, do you just like wait and just try to counterpick the whole team, or do you like start locking things in and just stuff you feel comfortable in? I think you got to counterpick a little bit, just based on how weird that last draft. That was a very unorthodox draft, and they ran it really well. So they did. They you got to a little bit to what they're doing. Both teams kind of ran something a little bit off. No, no, we've seen both those style drafts in the past come out in different metas in Hots, but neither one of those are like the most popular draft right now. Um, so, maybe a little hint at what the next meta will be uh, with this next balance patch. So, first ban, uh, first pick going to go over to Few Loose, and they do ban out yep. the Medivh as that was right, a right. solid pick for them. Also, Medivh is super good at scouting out the objective points on this map. Yeah, we saw a lot of that Medivh uh, vision value around a couple of the shrines, just Medivh like way in the back line where no other hero could be good, aside from like Farsight Raycar. <laughs> Farsight, or yeah. Sonic Arrow Hanzo is probably better, as they yeah, nerfed Farsight at one point. Yeah, what, what it, listen. They nerfed <laughs> Farsight, but they left the, ra the Sonic Arrow from Hanzo, which is better. A new rack getting banned out from in too deep. They understand that cocoon. Both teams looking to maybe run the same style of draft, but they're trying to ban out what the other team ran that was uh, countering it from them. Yeah, the new rack also a good ban. Both these teams, pretty, I think, Based on these bands, they have a pretty good grasp on why uh, they won or lost and what their threats were. Yeah, very good at adapting. These teams are showing uh, skill in that. Might have banned out by a few loose screws. I understand that that hero is still super strong. Yep, pretty good in that for her as well. Not a lot of wave clear, but she gives a lot of pressure to rotations and stuff. You know what you, I, normally you would see it paired with the Medivh, but no, you sometimes see um, 
main tank Zul come out on this map because of how small it is. We see the Chen Ban is in too deep. Jeff really understands that's too uh, too strong to let through again without the Medivh. Johanna getting picked up instantly by a few loose here's playing that wave clear. That's not the same kind of dive that they had last game, but uh, still the same amount of wave clear. Maybe even more coming out from them. Yeah, Johanna by herself, if she takes Sin's Exposed and the uh, Q damage at 13, even without the Q damage, she pretty much one shots. If she just does face rolls on her key, she one shots Lee pretty much by herself. Yeah, maybe that's so also, uh, I mean, also hard to kill. Sometimes you see her in the solo lane because uh, we actually see Bacon on the Thrall and Hanzo being picked up by Loxley. Hanzo, super good right uh, right now, good for vision as well. In too deep, seeming to like that vision game a lot. Maybe we will see Farsight, Rhaegar, Pillar on top of that. They can play the throw, maybe hinting at someone else. Uh, well, someone else is probably supporting in that case, where they could be using the swap later on, not realizing they can pick in any order. So we see um, Evil Loose Heroes picking up all the rack coming out, as well as Sonya. So that is intimidating, right? That is a heavy front melee front line right now. Triple melee coming out from Evil Loose Screws. Maybe we'll still see a main tank Zul as you need about three melee on the enemy team to start to make it work. Anduin banned out by Into Deep. Not wanting a uh, few loose screws to get those uh, hand, the helping hands again. Yeah, the Banduin coming through. Pretty good. Anduin last game had some very solid helping hands. But <laughs> helping hands. Leap, uh, helping hands to save the few Leap with Light Bomb would have been pretty deadly too, as it would have been like a three yeah. second stun chain that she could just land. Ana getting banned out by few loose screws. Because they do kind of need some sustain. This one is looking to spin a little bit to get some value there. Uh, this could be a crash thrall or it could be an offlane thrall. So that's interesting that they uh, they could still counterpick the Sonya potentially for that offlane. Yeah, with thrall that early, it could be really any main tank thrall. Let's go. Uh, we will see what they end up picking here for into deep as they pick up the Diablo. It's Dukov coming out from Key. Key plays the Dukov quite a bit when you let him. So that. Potentially, they have a, quite a bit of CC coming out from Into Deep this game. Diablo's whole setup, you have the Stukov ult, whichever one he picks. You have his silence, his slow, you have Hanzo usually picks up Dragon Arrow to stun out with. Thrall with his root, and then whatever ult he picks. We actually have Medic coming out from Hugh Loose. Screws. Right now, they don't really have a Sim target. They might be looking to Juice Pirate on such a small map. It's a potential. That As they pick scary. up Kalefoss, so probably not oh. Juice Pirate since they don't really have auto attack. But. Tons of sustain potentially coming out from them. Single target sustain. Uh, maybe still a meta because they don't really have a super great sim target. Though you could do it for the Sonya. Hyper carry Sonya was really good back in the day. Back when the top two assassins in the game were Illidan and Sonya. Yeah. What a fun time. You can still sometimes run it. You can still just sometimes just like double support and hyper carry a Sonya. The right yeah, setup. There's a strat. Gina coming out for into deep. Both teams picking yeah. up. One team running uh, fire. One team running ice. Uh, which team would you pick, fire or ice? I think I go with ice here, just because I kind of want a game three because these games are very interesting. They are. They are. I guess for the sake of uh, counter picking, I'll go with fuel of screws. Game one performance was super dominating. Not sure how this Morales is going to work out, but I'm excited. I'm a Morales fan. So, I'm excited to see that. We have the Kale Thoughts. Maybe we'll see Pyroblast come out and just try to pick off the Stukov. Um, yeah, not a bad idea. That match just shove 50 armor, though. That could be a pretty solid counter if you can time it right. It can be. We have Loxley on the Thrall. Bacon is actually on the Janas. They did some swapping when we weren't looking there. Raze on the Diablo. Key, 1108 on the Stukov, and Grizzly64 playing the Hanzo. And for loose screws, we got Johanna on wipe. Nope, wipe on Johanna. Lompico <laughs> on Alarak, Ash uh, A Cash on Kelthos, Infinite Loop on Lieutenant Morales, and Ragnarok playing. So. Remember, Johanna being played by. <laughs> right, I gotta remember that. It's a good strat. As they are loading in and gonna start picking their level one talents here, what talents are you looking for them to pick up? Um, I'm curious what the Alarak ends up building. He's already taking taking the Ruthless Momentum talent, which is sort of the new... Uh, we got Fingers of Frost on Jaina, which is pretty standard. Uh, Reactive Ballista Spores on Stukov, which is interesting. That's probably pretty smart with the Alarak. You don't want the Alarak to get on you, or the Sonya as well. So Ballista Spores gives him a little bit of self heal. Um, yeah, Q-Build on Hanzo. That makes sense on this map. Pretty good Q-Build Hanzo. Uh, and... Say life support at level one for Lieutenant Morella, so she's probably going to be opting for a safe card. 
Life support is a pretty common pickup for her as someone who actually plays that hero a lot. Yeah, Ruthless Bronze I'm being made popular by a not before. paradox video. Q build, I've literally okay. never played Q build still. So. Played a ton of Hanzo, and I still refuse to ever build Q build. <laughs> I've done auto attack build like 15 times, I've not done Q build once. We actually have block picked up for uh, Sonya here. That could be interesting. As Bacon's on the top lane, he's got telekinesis by the Alarak, but he oh, misses boy. the Discord strike and not being able to be held there long enough by the Johanna being played by Wipeout. On the bottom yeah, lane, the block on, back. Yeah, the block on Sonya really makes that lane hard for Thrall, I think. She's going to be able to zone him out. It's good for well. laning, but it's kind of like. It's, it's a little bit worse for everything besides the lane phase, so it's just. Kind of a back and forth, and when you take block or not, Diablo gain telekinesis and Discord strike. He's using sitting at about half health, and we'll lose a little bit more to the living bomb there as Bacon clears out the remainder of that wave of Blizzard and Cone of Cold. Yeah, as Raza is looking at the Johanna here, might be able to get a stun on her if she's not careful. But the stun making him Apparently. dodge the Hanzo Q on the Johanna. The Sonic Arrow comes out and almost lands on the Kalefoss there. Johanna or Sonya driving this thrall back in the bottom lane is uh, he's not looking too good mana wise right now. Whole team's kind of rotating around trying to find a little bit of damage here and there. Blizzard going out on the Johanna, not going to be used on the uh, wave here a little bit. You know, put him a little bit farther behind a rotation each time they do something like that. Johanna yeah, doing what talent we'll see for Alarak at four. I wonder if we'll go the uh. uh Oh, blanking on the show of for it. Cool telekinesis build. Uh, Johanna, or Sonya looking to uh, turn in a little bit here, but it's like it's interrupted by the Thrall. He's just kind of... Ooh, puzzle. this could be a big game. The Thrall's not careful. I'm not sure they've said... Oh, he definitely hasn't sipped it out. This is nope, about he's to way too that. close right now. He's going to use his E to try to get away, but he's going to get telekinesis back in, but he's going to make the Sonya Mr. Q. Now, Duke City. Sidestep King. This, uh... Alarax, uh, Telekinesis, they keep landing, but they keep pulling people out of other abilities. So yeah, Alarak is a hero. It might take him a couple of combos to warm up first if he hasn't played it. We do have the Sins Exposed picked up. As Diablo stuns in, the Johanna flips her back into the Blizzard, but it's not going to be enough as it is Johanna at the end of the day. Spin to win Talon being picked up by the Sonya. Uh, removing the root from the Thrall, potentially, or the Blizzard, uh, or the... The... Passive coming out from Jaina as uh, Alaric was still bottom, picks up that siege camp for his team there. It's a lot of pressure in that bottom lane going back and forth. Uh, in 2D, might want to look to rotate someone down there. As Hanzo takes a lot of damage here and gets telekinesis back in, not quite enough damage to finish him yet as they change targets to this Diablo. They haven't put a whole lot of damage on him yet. They do get the uh, tap out of Grizzly there for it. Is, uh, they're almost a half level behind here on in too deep right now as they stun out the Alaric, but this Morales armor putting in work on that counteracting a lot of that damage as Hanzo continues to take a lot, but the Stukov Silence putting in work on this Johanna and the Kael'thas was in it for a little bit as he's at half health. He healed up by this Morales who's sitting at about half her energy bar right now. She's still able to heal things for a little bit here. Meanwhile, this siege camp is still going in the bottom lane. He's already taken a tower and this Thrall needs to figure out a way to do it as he has to use the second tap of the game. Diablo is zoning out the Johanna in the top objective point, meanwhile. No. We do have Show of Force out of the Yellow Arc, and we also have Energy Royal from Kalfos, it's not the Nether Wind or whatever it is that we usually see from Kalf. I think you so. run either one. This one is just the mana, just mana and CDR on it. So he's looking to lift people up more often, more CC from them, lower cooldowns. Mana Addict, Vigorous Reuptake. Oh. Yeah, that's, that is interesting. I kind of like Vigorous Reuptake personally, but I don't play Stukov at any sort level that could be considered high. Good count. Talent coming up from Morales is going to up her W250 armor whenever someone's stunned or rooted underneath of it, which is a lot of the time as the Sonya is getting ganked by three in the bot lane, but she's going to be able to spin the win out because the second she got slowed by the Jaina, she just starts spinning and gets out of it. Yeah, some good hurricane value. It should come into handy later put along with the, uh, the Thrall root and the even maybe the Stukovs. Poison Spear coming out from the sun and going a little old school there with the extra burst as the Diablo gets telekinesis ending and he's going to get gravity laps as well. But the silence coming out from Stukov as actually he's going to spread the bomb from Diablo oh, to Key because no. he just decided to mount up while standing next to him. We actually have some dude being picked up by Johanna, a very good talent that uh, sometimes gets overlooked in favor of other things. 
Yeah, I like to do a lot. This is my personal thing. Yeah, we're getting telekinesis through the wall, but Johanna's oh, getting grenaded yeah. out, and she's gonna hit by the spider web as well. If she's not careful, she might have. She almost died there. Meanwhile, souls are finished for Diallo. He's at max tankiness right now for this point in the game. Meanwhile, Bacon's still trying to clean this out without trying to take out too much more poke. This Sonya's bodying through on the bottom lane. If he's not careful, he's going to fall down here. I don't know if she saw the spear or not, but she's definitely landing a lot. She had spear, but she wasn't able to land it. It would have been a cooldown for yeah, just Pearl's a second longer. He's going to need some ganks down there. For sure. Coming. This is uh, why some people don't pick up their uh, soul lane for quite a while. As Jaina gets picked up on the Stuke of Silence, and they're spreading oh, the bomb, bomb onto the Hanzo there. again. Hanzo gets hit by the wave. They keep spreading bomb right as the spider wave comes in. They're... Doing a lot of this damage to themselves with that spider uh, wave and the Kael'thas bombs going back and forth. Sukov silence, but he's going to get bumped out of it, and Jade is going to fall to the living bomb and oh, pass no, it over please. to Key. He's going to get telekinesis no. back and die to the Discord strike from the Alarak. That was that was a an unfortunate series of events there for for NTD. A lot of bomb spreading, a lot of spider value. That's just unlucky all around. Looks like few loose heroes are going to go for a boss play here. Right as they're about to pick up temp, knowing that few loose. And into deep will not be able to counteract them for a while as they were down members and they're were showing one in the bot lane. They're still showing one as Diallo's instead become this campus of helping out for the bot lane like he was a second ago. Grizzly needs to be careful as he's trying to soak a little bit of top lane, but he doesn't realize that all five of the enemy team is right around the corner as they pick up the boss and tens at the same time. He has blessed shield coming out from them. And they're Wrath, uh, Wrath of the Berserker. It is going to be the Syndrome, so we'll see who that goes on. Most likely, it will be on that Jo or on yeah Johanna, no on the Sonia Pyroblast and Counter Strike coming out as well. Maybe we'll see Pyroblast uh, get a couple che cheeky pickoffs on someone here as Diablo charges the boss to try to help clear that out a little bit as Grizzly starts hitting it with all of his stuff and Bacon's there hitting it as well. well Grizzly's interestingly not pushing their boss at third ten advantage and pushing with boss. I feel like they could have gotten more out of it. Well, it looks like they were just finishing up getting turned in as they're going to be able to now throw an entire spider wave at into deep. Just kind of keep pressure constantly going across the map as much as they can. Jo uh, Johanna getting hit by the Sonic Arrow, so they have vision on her. It's going to stay there for a little bit. She provides the vision to the Alaric there. We have tens picked up now for into deep as they pick up Sunder. And they pick up Water Ellie. Apoc, Stun Arrow from uh, Dragon Arrow, right? Yeah, Dragon's Arrow. Stun Arrow. From Hanzo. And Shove coming out from... Uh, the Stukov there, as the spiders are coming down the lanes right now, the spiders do spot at the farthest push enemy wave as they uh, clear top lane down, or nearest building. It's the building or uh, minion wave in each lane. In too deep really is going to need to land that uh, Dragon's Arrow, uh, Apoc combo. I, I do generally prefer Water Ellie on Dana, but they might have needed ring here. Uh, hopefully they I always go ring. I figure you don't need to chase them with Water Ellie if they're already dead from ring. That's, that is true. Yeah, ring definitely would have been good here. With a uh, max range Dragon Arrow, if you hit Apoc as soon as there's they get double stun. Like, it's, it's just the easiest setup in the world. Thrall's gonna get caught out here as the entire team's able to wrap oh, around behind him as they finish up mid for it. Yeah. He's gonna try to look to find a spot to back here. He needs to mount up at the minimum. He's gonna actually Ooh. turn around. He's gonna find out that the whole team is not even chasing them. The lightning it's from the other gonna dismount him as they're gonna use yeah. every other CC on him. And he's gonna drop really all of his gems. Thankfully, they still have a turn in, but that is a lot of gems to lose. That's half of the next. If they can even get this first one. It's very true. They do have a turn in available on Into Deep as few loose screws are guarding the bottom turn in and taking the bottom stage camp. And Sony's gonna be starting it on that. Uh, Bruiser Camp, thank you, DB Smiley, for your rating party of 10. Thank you, Selexia, for your 69 bits. What a guy. Selexia's a girl. She's another NGS what caster. Both, yeah, both of them are NGS casters, so thank you both. We have Blessed Hammer as 13s come out for a few loose screws. Pyromaniac, so some extra CDR for him. He's going to be able to grab a lot constantly now. We have System Shock. So 30% less damage dealt by people who are hit by grenade. A little interesting there. You usually still see the CDR as it knocks back Diablo Ooh. into his team. There's the silence though on three as Water Ellie comes out on the Kel'Thas. Apoc Diablo coming out and they're going to be able to finish off the Alaric and that is going to be a loss on all of his sadism as Diablo is about to fall as well to the Sony who's in the back. But meanwhile Kel'Thas picks off the Jaina. And Sonya does able to pick off the Diablo but Jaina's still super low. Ragnarok's going to be careful there. It's actually Simdrone on the Kel'Thas. Sun King Shuri doesn't do that anymore, guys. 
You didn't even have sunken series. You didn't even pick up the auto tech one. As we said, goes to clear out the bottom camp now a little bit. As he did, he was able to survive there. But actually, the mystic spear pulled, uh, picked up Bison. She will always get pulled about like that spear. As they're able pushing in with underneath the spell armor from the bruiser camp here. We're gonna be able to clear out mid well. They already killed the wall. They're taking down this keep. They're looking pretty solid right now. A few loose screws into deep needs to find something here. They're still down ults, but they do have shove available to remove someone. As Diablo charges the uh, minion giving from the bruiser camp, providing all that. Bacon getting grenaded into his team and then gravity laps, but it doesn't matter because Silence on two in the backline. Alderac uh, pulling in the Diablo with telekinesis there and Living Bomb being thrown on him as well. In uh, a few loose screws is doing a good job of focusing damage at one person at a time. If someone on the they throw a bunch of cooldowns at him simultaneously. And a lot of times it's enough as uh, Ray of Rexure was picked up for the all right there. 13 is almost picked up for in too deep as their camp is being stolen by a few loose screws. If, ooh, ooh yeah. Sun Arrow coming out from the Hanzo on two. And meanwhile, Diablo's getting zoned by the Dana, Johanna. The we have the throw going in the back line. He's able to pick off the Morales as Alarax in the back now being killed by the Jaina throw combination. As Sonya actually got shoved Gina underneath the keep there. And Johanna getting super low as well. Ragnarok needs to be careful, but Johanna getting slowed out by the water alley. And now Ragnarok's going to look to go down to the water alley slows as well. And that is a four-man team fight going in favor into deep. The team fight that they've been looking for. Gina securing all four kills. Quad kill going over to her. Yeah, that was a great move by into deep. They really needed to make a big plays to turn that around there. And Thrall and Jaina had like an insane flank. Like, not even Earth, it was just a Sunder flank. It was still a raw Sunder flank, and Jaina annihilated Morella. Like, I don't even think she got the first aid off for the uh, cellular, cellular reaction. So, yeah, she just got annihilated. So, this is what n Deep needed exactly to come back in the game. They got like a level and a half off that team fight, if not more. White. They're still behind on the race to 16, but they're way ahead of where they were before. But and now, plus, they got a turn in. Yeah, now they have spiders. Their first spider wave going in favor of n Deep. They're going to be looking to try to take at least a four here. They need some of this extra passive XP that uh, Few Loose Screws is sitting on right now. Uh, Few Loose Screws is kind of scouting out all the bushes they can, but not the ones up by Boston, which is where Into Deep is, as Diablo reveals himself with the W there. But it is a 5v5 top lane, as Few Loose Screws decides that the rest of the lanes are just not important enough just yet. And actually, Sergeant is going to the mid lane. In fact, Few uh, Into Deep is going to look to go down on her. Ragnarok is going to get hit by the Diablo stun. Charge stun. And then Sunder's gonna go out as well, but again, it causes the uh, Hanzo Q to miss, and that was just the amount of damage they probably needed there to get the kill. Some awkward counter synergy. They blew the A block for that as well. That's unfortunate. It did. As 16s are picked up, four few loose screws, they're gonna look pretty good here. 600 health on the Sunny, she's gonna start getting healed, but it's the living bomb value on the rest of the team is getting tons of damage. Bacon's super low, but the Sunny does eventually fall. Pyroblast going in on the Stukov, he's gonna look to be just fine, but he's gonna survive, but he's gonna be low. Kill, uh, James is about 300 health right now, it's a 4v. Five still, but doesn't matter if the enemy team has no health bars on them. 16 was picked up Ignite for the kill thought, so he's going to get living bombs on his Qs as well as they get the bottom fort killed by the Spire that will now time out and fall down. As both teams just rotate here to continue with the 4v5. As Thrall lands a rune on Johanna, and then she's going to have to passive. Doesn't matter. Living Bomb explodes on three from the Kelfos in that choke point. Diablo sitting at about half health. That is Stim Drone on the Johanna for the extra movement speed there. As Alderac is looking to clear out this camp. Meanwhile, we have a reversal of what we saw earlier, and we see uh, Indu deep still in the camp of Blue Screws. As Diablo getting pulled out by the Alderac telekinesis. He's at five health. He was at five health. He's wow. going to be able to get out as the Stu Call Silence goes in. Good job, Key, on that silence. Meanwhile, the Thrall is on this Kael'thas again, and it's forcing the Morales to go join him. Yeah, into deep bumps to pull out here for sure. Thrall's like zero mana. Key's very low. Although that that uh, into deep has reaction. another turn, and they're gonna go for it here as the Diablo was zoning for them, and will continue to do so here. As the only person there is the Johanna. He looks and gets the Sun. He's got two Sun Quest uh, sacks already. Didn't quite get the flip reset combination that he was looking for as uh, Water Ellie was popped for that. Water Ellie is going to back off a little bit here. Does Water Ellie give XP if it dies? Uh, I doubt it. I think most of those mechanics are out of the game. But... I know Avatar clone still does. I, I would I would be surprised. If that... Doesn't matter. Mid Spider is going to fall right down in the middle of a few loose screws and it's going to probably just die right away. Meanwhile, into deep is sitting in the top lane looking for a pickoff potentially into that wall side. They were fishing for the Morales it looks like and they, they weren't able to quite find Morales there like they were looking for. Living Bomb from uh, from Ignite gonna go on Thrall there in the top half of that lane. But actual Living Bomb will go on Diablo as he charges the Johanna into the side wall there. Doesn't matter. So he's looking for a flank here. 
Nothing coming out just yet as telekinesis and discord strike go on the Diablo. Meanwhile, Hanzo's stun arrow comes out and that is Simdrone on the Diablo, but he's gonna have to counter strike the APOC there as he was in the middle. Then it's Pyroblast on the throw going out as uh, both teams are trying running into each other. Meanwhile, telekinesis, discord strike, and the other abilities from everyone just hitting that Jaina and picking her off. Sony was able to rotate to the mid lane, finish that one, spite spooter off as they head into the bottom lane. Yeah, you could tell Jaina was looking to ice block that combo. But the Meanwhile, Diablo is going to get pulled into the enemy team by the Telekinesis again. And then Ooh, we have the silence there. coming out from the from Key there onto the Alarak, negating the value from that. I hope my roommates aren't <laughs> hearing this. Like, I, I feel like I'm actually yelling quite a bit. As a few loose screws just have Johanna start the boss for them. They just decide, hey, That's they're down one play. person. I, Let's rip it. I don't know if they can do that. Sony is in the bottom lane. Ah, it doesn't look like N2Deep. N2Deep's not going to sniff it out, so it doesn't quite matter. Is They're going to go for the Bruiser Camp instead. Trading Bruisers for a boss is not really what you normally want to do, but you don't know that they're doing it. You don't know that they're split. Well, I mean, you would know Probably that they're split because you only split saw that. They're pinging it out now. They do realize it's going on. They just are a little too late. As the boss is already down, as they're showing up, they need a pocket. There's the Anzo arrow, but or Sonic arrow, but it doesn't matter. Is there? It's done. It was done by the time they showed up. Uh, a few loose screws knew exactly how long it would take for them to do that boss, and they were able to get there as time as they're also going to get a turn in. That's going to be a boss spider push in. This is a reverse of momentum that Into Deep did not want to see. Yeah, that is unfortunate. They're also pretty behind on the race to 20 now. Oh no, the stop! So oh, going out on Jaina as they're trying to change. She Hohano! Oh, her uh, Morales Grenade gonna pull that Thrall into the middle of them. If anyone else was there, he probably would have ended up dead. But instead, he's gonna walk oh. away because it's just Johanna Morales. Two low damage heroes in the game. They probably smart not to use the Blushed Shield there. I didn't realize all the DPS were. 700. If I were that Johanna, I would have I would have ripped it and then not had it for the important. 700 so health in mid uh, mid keep. 280. Uh, 2.8k on the bo uh, bottom one as Apoc Hanzo arrow comes out and as Morales is going to go down to the water LA Thunder as well as Alarax is going to fall wow. down. Never mind, he's going to counter strike it. He's still going to fall in the end as uh, you know, Diablo gets hit by the Pyroblast. Living bomb value going out on the Janer. She's going to be forced to uh, yeah. ice block there. She's at 100 health now and taking up finally. She's going to take out a little you bit. See mid fort going down, or mid keep going down. You can see Key dancing there a little bit. He wanted to spread his heal to Jaina, but he had a living bomb on him, so he needed to be sure not to. That was, that was a good heads up play by Key, not killing his Jaina. We have 20s going the way of few loose screws as uh, two of their spiders are down, and the third one's getting pretty low. They're probably not going to fight here, so they're still down two members here. Though, Kael'thas is going to have value from that flamethrower as he throws out his Q and is able to hit Key from a mile away. We also have Stim Drone at, uh, upgrade picked up, so it's an extra. It's now a 50% movement speed boost. Potentially yeah, being I guess they're just using it for the move speed in general. We also have Hasty Bargain picked up from the Alarak, so he's gonna be able to uh, blink out and. Uh, or no, that's the reset. This is the CDR, so he's able to uh, combo tons there. Alarak, uh, Alarak. Johanna getting Ooh, forced. Oh, oh yeah. Johanna getting hit by the Hanzo arrow. She's forced to get her indestructible pop, but she's getting slowed by. She's dead. She's, dead. she's just dead. I don't have time to finish she's it. Dead, she's just dead. Meanwhile, Sony's keeping vision on this camp, but she's going to get set it up with a Sonic Arrow as, again, into deep is going to go for this camp. Last time they're here, this is when they lost momentum of the game. So they will have to be careful not to do so again, as they will end up taking this. The Wraith of the uh, is popped by Sony. She's just going to spear in. She shouldn't need to be careful there, or she would have ended up falling. One gem needed for into deep for them to uh, actually get this turn in. But they're going to start turning in with the 59 out of 60 that they have. Well, uh, Fuller Screws is going to go in and realize there's only three people here right now for them. As they will fall off, and I dropped talents right as they picked up 20. Ooh, we got composite spear on Sony, that could be a problem. A couple of cooldowns going out on the Morales there, but nothing nothing really that much to threaten her yet. In too deep needs to be careful not to lose their core, as the Jaina takes tons of health and is forced to get the D from Stuka, but she also ice blocks and she probably didn't need to, and now she's forced to pop water alley. Sounds coming out, oh it doesn't matter, Sony gets hit by the Diablo. And that she's dead, but she's going to die to the living bomb in the back. Meanwhile, Diablo is going to blink forward and try to stun out the Alarak, but he's going to get value from his Counter-Strike. Meanwhile, I can't, Thrall is going to go down as well to the Kael'thas. She's staying across the walls. He's going to get tons of value, but Morales is going to fall to the Diablo combo. Stukov getting the root combo onto Alarak, but it doesn't matter. Is Diablo still there? He's going to shove back the Johanna from Stukov, but it doesn't matter. He's going to fall to 60 health, and he's going to die to the living bomb. Not enough to turn in anyways, and they're going to die... 
we're going to have three people die trying to do so. Skillfoss almost stops Grizzly's back with the cube searching for where he was. If you lose screws, it's still scouting out here. Looks like they're going to potentially go and take Bruiser Camp here. They're going to play it safe and just try to clear up the wave a little bit. Push up some pressure on this last keep here for few into deep here. Whew. Yeah, definitely could have been worse for them. The two for two trade, well, the two for three, but Diablo had sold. It's not the end of the world. They still have some momentum, but lane pressure is definitely not in their favor. Into Very deep, definitely going to need that turn in here to try to get something done. I'll probably push bomb. They also need a boss. As a few of the screws have been able to get every boss so far, and it's 30 seconds till that backup. Diablo Scout's out. They're on the Bruiser Camp, so is the Sonic Arrow. They know they're not able to contest that, so they let him walk away with it. As into deep now has the full turn in available. The screws won't have turn in for a while still. They're still like 50 plus gem. Into deep needs to watch them spraying these bombs and fighting in the tight quarters. Yes, it's nice for Jaina, but it's even nicer for Kelpas is able to get a Q across the wall again, chunking the Jaina and the Diablo, and then Living Bomb goes out from them. Diablo's here. sharking around here. He's looking. The both teams looking. Thrall's popping all of his cooldowns to try to get in on the Johanna, but she'll pull up Blessed Shield up. Make sure that they can get out for free here without giving up too much. Because they know that the mid and top lanes are being heavily pressured by Winions in their favor. As they will instead go and clear out the bottom camp. Still trying to put pressure on this bottom keep that they still have to take down. Yeah, Blessed Shield's still down for 40 more seconds. Indestructible is back up. So, well, this is sort of a waiting game right now. Looks like both teams are going to start positioning for the top boss. This will probably be the game deciders who ends up winning this boss. Yep. As Into Deep can get, do boss turn in to try to push down Fort Keep and Core. And the other, uh, in a few loose screws could just go straight boss core. Uh, a few loose screws is just going to start ripping it right away because they uh, they see they're three of them. They saw three of them in the oh, mid lane. No. They're, they're going to have to react to this like very soon. Dude, they're going to see it with Sonic Arrow, they're going to see the Johanna standing up. They're going to leash it at about half health, but they did take some damage, and they took about half of Morales' health bar there, or energy bar, as Blue, using Diablo in the bottom, was able to finish the turn in, and that's going to be spiders in there, and they're going to despawn the boss for them, so they don't have to worry about it. If they're, uh, oh, they're going to lose bottom keep. Bottom keep will not fall unless the cat, as long as they clear the cat, they'll be fine, because everything else doesn't proc onto the building over it. I feel like Siege Minions... Nice. I feel like Siege Minions AI needs to be changed to be like the Kaz or always prioritizes buildings. That would probably be a healthy change. It, it just <laughs> makes more sense for the name Siege. That's true. As uh, a few loose screws, they will clear up the top spider, but Into Deep is just fishing for this fight right now as they're gonna use lightning from Thrall to dismount the Sonya yeah, there. The Thunderstorm slow as well. Is he have that quest done? He's got three oh, stacks on it. It resets when you die, so. Sonic Arrow gonna look for the flank from Sonya. We'll see if they end up. They do ping it out. They do know she's up there. Sukhov going up there by himself right now. If she's not careful, he won't be there to start healing up the rest of the team. As Diablo gets telekinesis and Discord striked into it. Meanwhile, the Q from Kael'thas landing on the Jaina. Thrall's in the back. He lands a big Sunder on three of them. Johanna getting hit by the stun arrow, but doesn't matter. A lot of. A lot of the cooldowns are being used on Sonya. Hanzo is super low as well. Meanwhile, the Stim Drone going... Hanzo's going to dull to a Pyroblast here in a second. Uh, Key's also looking pretty low as he gets hit by another Kael'thas Q. He's at 400 health. Diablo's looking pretty healthy, but it doesn't matter if he's going to be taking all this damage. Sonya going to be able to spear forward using her 13 talent, and that's going to give enough vision for Kael'thas to finish him off with another Q. Thrall and Diablo are going to back. They're going to get bottom keep for this, but it doesn't matter if you don't have a core. That's the whole point of the game is they already have triple cata from the top lane in there. Thrall's trying to do what he can, but Diablo's just sitting at base. That is going to be a 2-0 victory going in favor of a few loose screws. Yeah, loose screws played that really well. That counter engage at the end there was crazy. Like, Diablo got a very good combo into uh, Sonya, and it looked like she was done. She didn't even have Ignore Pain, so she probably would have died there. But I think Kael'thas and... Maybe Alarak just annihilated Jaina and she died before she even knew it. Yeah, that was quite a game there. As we see, uh, hero damage actually went in favor of Thrall for uh, one team, and uh, Kael'thas getting almost 100,000 uh, hero damage That's out that game. He got about 46,000 more hero damage than Thrall, which was the next highest. Yeah, he really put in a lot of work. There's so many living bombs that just destroy like they did a lot of work the flamethrower especially as well in fact the flamethrower and the burn flesh yeah kael'thas actually had zero deaths that whole match 
Yeah, Kilthos just chilling in the back. I don't remember if Ray Cash was the cool van from last game. He seems to be pretty good chilling in the back, not dying. <laughs> yeah, very much so. I'm going to reach out to see if they want to do an interview. To do, 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 I lost where chat. Shouldn't you keep talking about the game? Uh, I thought the game was pretty good. Those both those sets were really cool. I, it's a shame they didn't go to it, but I think Screws Loose really or um, Keith's team, I think, uh, played that match sort of exactly how they had to. They played really aggro, uh, they got those big combos and those huge flanks, they really needed to turn the momentum around, and they did several. They gained and lost momentum like multiple times, which usually doesn't happen. Usually, you like if you gain momentum, like that's it, and you just sort of keep it. But if you lose it again, like you hardly ever get it back. But they did, I think, maybe even more than twice. Yeah, it was definitely so they, they really did, a very heavy back and forth there. Yeah, really back and forth. If it's it is unfortunate that the they had negative lane pressure pretty heavily, which I think was probably the deciding factor there. If I had to pick one. All right, wipeout, uh, and then that counter engage. Yeah, wipeout's gonna go ahead and join us in a, a lobby for NGS. So we're gonna go ahead and give him an interview. Hello, wipeout. Hey, turn you up. Can you speak again? I'm. Uh, yeah, I usually talk pretty quiet. All right, I think that should be loud enough for people to hear you. What cool. a game series! Yeah, it was fun. You sound. Kind of tired. Did it wear you out? Uh, no, more more or less surprised. I uh, came in. I, I've had a long day. Um, yeah, I was at an air show with kids, so I just like literally sat down and started playing. I think it showed first game. <laughs> you guys ended up winning the first game. It seems so long ago as the second game was just so hype. It just seemed to stretch out as there was also a couple of momentum swings back and forth. It took forever. You guys uh, <laughs> played... <laughs> Kerrigan and Golgon. Is Kerrigan a normal pick for you guys on that Infernal Shrines? Not at all. We just went, you know what, what would be fun? We swap, swap roles and just went, <laughs> let's have fun with it. Yes. It was fun. The Kerrigan looked really good. Yeah. yeah. lumpico has been, he's been doing pretty much everything for us. He's been doing support. He's been doing off lane. And I was like, put me on something that's flex, that's uh, a little bit more aggro. I'm like, all right. It doesn't get much more aggro than a Kerrigan, really. Yep. Except for maybe... Sometimes you see super aggro Illidans. Yeah, I felt like I was inting on on a noob, and everything else started just popping. I'm like, all right, let's keep it going. <laughs> yeah, you guys had a... You guys made it look very clean, so if that was a roll swap, it it looked good. Real well, good. Yeah. Um, did the double support comp coming out from Into Deep on Infernal Shrines kind of take you guys for a surprise, or did you kind of guess that that was going to come out? Honestly, I didn't have time to do proper research this time around, so it was we were completely winging it. Um, it makes sense, especially if they saw the Kerrigan, the, the noob made sense. And we uh, one thing we did well, I think, was that we talked through what, uh, what to look out for. Um, so it really helped. Um, we were all sort of spreading out, making sure that we're not getting caught, like more than one person getting caught in the entombs and stuff. So Yeah. So, it looked pretty good. You guys, I, now that you mention it, I, I can look back and I can see how there was originally a couple, like two or three getting caught in tombs, but as it went on, it became a lot of one man in tombs. You guys did seem to adapt in that game a lot, though it didn't need much adaptation. You guys just kind of seemed to snowball that game a little bit. Yeah, and I, I think the end was a bit of a surprise to all of us. <laughs> um, I don't think... We actually didn't want to take the fight, I think, and... I got picked, and then my guys just turn it around, and yeah, I, I felt like I got carried because they just blew up everything. <laughs> uh, the feed to you win strategy is one I'm a fan of as well. Yeah, I totally debated them. Yeah, yeah. Going into game two, what were what was in your head when you're going into game two? There, what was your thought process after that game one? So, in game one, I was pretty sure that they were going to ban the Chen because Rag just popped off, um, and they did, and I didn't feel like we wanted to do the same strat and dive. Um, so we just wanted to draft a much slower pace comp that lets them dive into us and we uh, sustain and it worked out kind of flip the roles of the teams around a little yeah. bit yeah it was funny because like going into game two is like alright both teams are banning out what was the issue for them in game one 
So maybe both teams are just planning on trying to run the same style comp. You guys end up swapping the style comp instead. Just kind of betting out yeah, for the opponent. Initially, initially, I was thinking, well, it worked. Let's try it again. But uh, then decided just let's let's just play a, a bit of a better macro game instead of just diving throw them off. Maybe well, it ended up working out as you ended up did taking the W. I'm trying to think when you guys lost momentum there and got a uh, kind of got wiped on one of those pushes there into their keeps. Yeah, I felt like I overstayed, and then Loxley was just like right after me, and was like, yeah, you're not walking away, and I didn't. <laughs> the whole team was like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not good. As the water ele elemental was able to slow you guys all down and pick you off one at a time with that Thrall flank on the, and Jaina flank from the back there. At Bruiser camp. Yeah, they were just not letting me go. <laughs> but I think, again, uh, my team, they... Well, unfortunately, Akash couldn't talk the entire time, but he typed well enough. Um, so we just talked through it and slowed our aggro down because I'm usually pretty aggro. And yeah, we just played it well, much better than usual. You guys ended up forcing a lot of fights in those top corridors that run between the lanes and that end up, while the Kel'Thas was outside of that, it will throw damage in and it looked very good for you, uh, that. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was good. We got the um, basically comfort pick, so it worked out. Let's say uh, let's say you know, twist of fate. They had one game two. Would you have taken map pick or first pick going into game three? Um, so it was fortunate. We actually seemed to do well ish on on um, tombs. Uh, I think we would have probably just gone first pick. We play all maps equally bad <laughs> <laughs> equally bad as you win a series 2-0 uh in that one do you have any uh, well logic do you have any uh questions for uh wipeout uh not really you're a tank player what do you think of the new johanna plus and shield up why'd you pick indestructible over that <laughs> uh, you hate fun. <laughs> i'm sorry no i that's my go-to pick pretty much every time it didn't save me at all this time around, but it's generally... I thought that's the meta. It almost one. did. It was close to that bottom line. Did. No. Uh, I actually... It's funny, because a lot of tanks find Johanna really boring, and I think she's one of the best tanks in the game. I am a tank player, and I find her boring, but I think she is very good. I, I think it depends on the game. Like, if you can eat a lot of damage, you just feel unkillable. I think that that's when she's really fun. But if she's you... She's got a lot of tools. Yeah. Like interrupt yeah, rotations and, and the blinds and whatnot, and the survivability, self gun. And level 20 blessed shield. Huh, yeah. <laughs> <That's that talent. laughs> uh, level I would 20, recommend trying it out, it's pretty good. I recommend level 20 falling sword. Uh, <laughs> I've actually seen it with uh, uh, Light Bomb, so that's maybe something in, in our near future. I heard someone else talk about that too. Key though. But, anyways, Wipeout, do you have any uh, shoutouts you want to do? Yeah, well, first of all, to my team for being there tonight. Um, a huge shout out to a brew or two who's been there for us uh, the entire season. I think today was um, a bit unlucky, but uh, really appreciate what he's done for us. Um, and yeah, to you guys for casting us, and obviously to um, Into Deep for being there and playing the game with us. Uh, Logic, I know I already asked you once because this is our second game that we've casted today, but do you have any cast uh, shout outs you want to do? Uh, I shout out both these teams for putting out some really fun games. I am genuinely disappointed we didn't get it because those were those were pretty. Good. Are, are, are you guys sure you don't want to play like a game three anyways? <laughs> we could brawl. <laughs> Just play Aram. We'll cast a, yeah, a hype I'm Aram. For that. <laughs> uh, probably not tonight, but uh, thank both teams for coming out. Thanks for letting us cast you guys. Uh, real fun. Uh, I'll probably end up watching this replay as it was super hyped to just watch and play. Uh, actually, chat has a question for you, Wipeout. Uh, they want to know, was the Sonya comfort pick? <clears throat> okay, so it was comfort picks except for Rag, who... Well, the problem is that he doesn't play much, so... It's a target ban, Rag. played Sonya, I don't know. No, Rag is... Uh, I think he's solid on pretty much any of them. Any of the solo laners, so... Yeah, he played in the lanes pretty good. He dominated that thrall. I, suppose, I, yeah. I felt bad. I, I've been in that thrall shoe, so it, it felt bad. Yeah. It's it okay. That boost the monkey. Alright. Well, that concludes our cast for today. Thank you all for coming out, and we hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you guys next time in the Nexus. Bye. Bye.